M0FXB, welcome to my channel and my videos on the ICOM ID52. M0FXB, so we've got our 52. We're going to turn the radio on, grey button here on the side. That's squelch, that's PTT. We'll get the welcome page, battery charge. Let's uh, set the screen brightness and screen timeout. Go menu over to set, then scroll down to get to display, select display, and we'll go backlight timer, and you can select which one you like. Let's just go 10 seconds for now. We'll go up to backlight, and we can either turn it to auto, where it will use the timer, or we can just turn it on so it's permanently on. So we've got that on okay. Let's have a quick look at the screen brightness. So gone down to brightness select with the middle button here we can go up and down at the moment i've got it low because it's a glare it will glare back with the cd button you've got dim screen settings there and dim timer as well brightness dim which you've just been okay all right let's move on to um our call sign. Entering the call sign is crucial for using this radio in digital voice mode. So we'll go menu again, over to set, and then we'll start at the top and we'll look for my station. There you go, my station. And then we'll select this middle button here for my call sign. And we'll, let's get a call sign in there. Push quick, the quick button here. And we'll click edit and let's get our call sign in there. So we'll enter in the middle. Sorry. Just start by turning the top knob. So we get M. Click to the right here. If you go backwards, you do get the, the numbers. Looking for zero. You don't want an O, you want a zero. XB. Right, FXB. We go across. Go past this hash, and we can put here, we could put in, probably get the word Andy in there, or we could put in ID52, which is what I'll do for now. I think it's four, four characters. Okay, and then click enter. Now we can add a message if we click the quick here again. Actually, that's not the way to do it. Click the back. So when you're at this point, click the CD button for back. And then scroll down to text message. Select the middle button here. And now we can add a message. Now there's always one, already one in there. So to add another one, just go to number two, click quick here, edit, and then you can add a message. We'll just put an F for now. And that's number that's number two message. And you get you get the idea. You can have a few up to five messages, possibly more. Or you can just turn message off. We'll leave it on. Then we can back out pushing CD. Back out again. And then hit VFO. And you're back into VFO mode. Let's get some basic understanding of what we're seeing here. So we're seeing the main band and the sub band. And you can, alt you can switch between these two by going pushing the main button here main 
There you go. And it actually says the word dual as well. So we've got A and B band. If we hold this button down, we get single display. And it's set now that when it's in single display to show the GPS, which has got a lock. And if you want to see a bit more information on, on the GPS, you hit the quick button here. Go down to GPS information and you'll get the satellite. If you go back here with the CD, hit it again, GPS position, you'll see the full position back here with this. Now if you want to see a different thing along the bottom here, select menu, go to set, then go all the way down to display. Then go down again to single band display and you can choose to have the date or GPS information. So if we choose date and then back out using the VFO button, look, we're now showing the date. We'll go back to dual display. Show you how to put it, put it into memory mode. So you've got MR button here and we're on the A band, so we've gone to memory mode. Now obviously if you haven't got any memories, you're not gonna see a lot, and I haven't got several. And we'll show you how to put a memory channel in in a second. Go to the B band, and we'll hit memory. There you go, we've got a couple in there. Let's put them both back into VFO mode. VFO, VFO. Right, let's quickly show you how to add a memory and maybe show you some other functions whilst doing that. So first thing we'll do is select A or B. So we'll go with A and let's put a frequency in there. So using the top knob here, you can change the frequency. If you put your finger on the VFO like so, push it, the one megahertz starts to flash. You can change that. Push VFO again, and you can change the smaller frequency. So we want 145, 600. We're going to put in GB3WR. The next thing we want to do is change uh, the power level. So hold your finger on the L LO button here to the right. Hold it down. Let's set the power we want for our local repeater. Let's put mid for now. You can also change the power by holding the low button down and then turning the, the, the top knob like so. Now, the power levels are S low is 0.1, L1 is 1 watt, L2, or low 2, is half a watt, medium, or mid, is 2.5 watt, and high is 5 watt. So let's back out of that. Let's add a normal memory channel for a repeater. So we've got our frequency in 145. 600 push menu go to set go all the way to the top we'll do duplex tone and we'll go to down to offset frequency at the top and it's already set at 600 to change this turn the top knob but we're on the correct one for two meters go back go down to repeater tone we want 94.8, again, use the top knob to change this, but that's fine as it is. Go back, tone, squelch, frequency, same again. Let's go back, back, back again, hit VFO. We've set the power now, let's set the mode. So we've got here on the left, DV, FM, 
FM, and you can do a digital voice one. There are further settings, but for now we're just doing an FM analog one. So we're going to choose FMN. Now hit the quick button down here. Let's go up to duplex and we'll select it here and then we'll select minus or we could turn it off or we'll go for minus. Hit the quick again, we'll go down to tone and we've chosen tone, tone squelch. Hit the quick again, just to let you know if you want to change the steps because sometimes you can't get the correct frequency in, just go down one to TS and click to the right and you can change the steps here and select the one you want. So we've got our GB3WR repeater in there. If we key the PTT, everything's as it should be. Now we want to store it and tag it to our memory. So hold down the MR button here and we'll select right to a new channel. And then you'll be presented here with some a number so when it's blank it will say here blank channel if you go backwards look it will show the previous channels and obviously you, there are there is a whole separate section here for memory groups we won't do that now we'll just keep it to the basics so we'll go 79 and we'll, we'll select the middle button do you want to write to the blank channel 79 we'll go yes so we've written the channel, but now we need to tag it. So we need to push memory again. And go to 79, where we've got GB3WR. Now we need to press and hold again. And then we get the option here to edit, we'll select. And then we'll click quick here and we'll click name and then we'll put in G B3 WR turn the top knob and then go across on the right here turn backwards for a number Once we've got that in there, then we'll just select and select again and again, and then it will give you this option, go up to overwrite, go yes. So now in memory mode, we now have the name GB3WR. If we go VFO, that's without, and then memory, and there we are. Now there is an option to put these into groups. Now I click your quick here, and look, you can select different groups there. Group select, look. I've got these different groups. That's my channels. Go back to VFO again. And if you wanted simplex, all you would do is go into the quick menu. Remove your duplex here to off. Quick menu again. Remove your tone to off. And then just choose, turn the knob to simplex. Now if you want to select a different band, select quick menu again. And at the top you've got band select. And then look, you can, you've can got all these choices. So this gives you an idea of all the different bands that this radio covers. So anyway, let's just say we want to select 70 centimeters. There you go. And you're in 70 centimeters. We could hit it again, band select, and you've got these, all these frequencies here. And you've gone to AM band there. We'll just go to the B band by pushing the main button here. We'll do the same again and see what bands we get on the B. So that, as you can see, they are reduced. So it looks like you need the A band to get the AM broadcast. Go back to the A band. By default, the uh, GPS is turned on and there is an SD card in this radio. The SD card goes in here. 
but be careful putting that in because you can you don't want to lose it in the radium get it the correct way round and it push it with your thumb and it just clicks in and out on this side you have the uh, micro speaker microphone jacks here you have your micro USB and DC input for charging Let's have a quick look at the band scope. So we'll go menu, we'll go across and up to scope. Now we've got the scope here. When it's in dual mode, it, it doesn't look too impressive. It does work. I found that if you've got it in dual mode, it the the B section will, will you're not really hearing it correctly. So let's go into single mode. And then you've got the ability here to to scan the band. There are quick settings for the band scope. Push quick and you can turn it off or, or you can turn it off just by pushing the VFO. Scope mode, you've got center, fix and scroll. We'll leave it in scroll, I think. And then we can turn the top knob, we can scroll through looking for activity. There are further settings in the main menu. Go to the set menu, go down to scope and you've got, I won't do a whole video just on this, but have a look later. We'll do a separate video on, on these functions, but look, you've got a water, you can turn on the waterfall function, which is on at the moment. Waterfall speed is fast. And then we've got other settings here, scope mode as well. Look, So some of the quick settings are in there as well, but it is, I think it's a nice scope. Uh, when you've got activity, it looks very, very, very nice for a handheld transceiver, but it's, it's nothing, it's nowhere near as high quality as, say, the ICOM 705. There are further GPS settings in the main menu, so you can go menu, GPS here, and you've got all these settings. Have a good look at them. We'll do a separate video on them all together. And whilst we're here, we'll show you how to send a picture. You just go to picture here, and when you're in DV mode, as long as you're on the same frequency and in range of each other, you can send a picture, or you can go via a hotspot or repeater. Back out just by pushing VFO. Same goes for the scope. So you go menu, scope, that's on if you want to come out. Look, VFO, and you're out. Let's put it, we're in single receive. Let's put the GPS back on. Let's go menu, set, go down to display. And it says here, single band display, and we're gonna go GPS information, then we'll back out of that. I haven't really used scan, but we'll select it anyway, mode. Well, if you just briefly press that button, it changes the mode, AM and AM narrow. If we hold it, now we have an ability to scan, Now we can select different sections to scan. I'm sure there's much more you can do with this. But if we just go all, it starts to scan. It's a reasonable speed. I'm guessing it will stop if it found anything, or we can just push the PTT. Hold it down again, mode scan. Let's push the quick, see if anything happens. No, nothing. Try it again. Let's go down to this one here. It scans again. Found something there. All right, okay. Let's have a look at Bluetooth. We go menu, set, go all the way down to the bottom, Bluetooth set. So the one I've used is pairing and connect. These are the items that it found and it connects to them fine. I mean, ham radio Bluetooth it is quite limited, so uh, really ask, I need to find some information on 
a device that will work well with Bluetooth. But it does pair up with my smartphone and I've used the app RSMS1. So look for that on your iOS or Android device. Very useful for sending photographs ETC. The other app is the ST4001A, which is for sending a photograph from your computer or phone via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi straight to your Icon 52. Okay, let's back out of that. Let's go to SD card. So you can import and export. Now let's select this. Import your call sign. Now the reason call sign is, in, is important because it is actually used for XLX and XRF reflectors. Let's go back. Repeater list. GPS memory. Even FM radio memory. And memory channels. So all very useful. Now you can back up the radio. So you would uh, save settings. These are different files that I've saved. And then you can load them back in. There you go. If we go down to others, you've got clone and reset. I'll just show you the SD card and the firmware section. Scroll to the bottom and there's firmware update it. I think it's a very straightforward process. Obviously you've got to follow it step by step, but it, I think once you, you upload the file to the SD card from ICOM, and then you select next, 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 and it, it works well. And the, the firmware version on this is, I'm pretty sure it's 1.20. See if we can find that info. We'll just look at S card info. And that's telling us what, is our, what size our SD card is and what space is free. Go to set, then go to others, then go to information, and then you've got voltage and version. So select version, and then look, you've got CPU version 1.20 and other settings there. Even the Bluetooth, we'll back out of that. Now to go into terminal mode access mode, select DV gateway and here's terminal mode and access mode. So there's a whole learning curve to that. But the thing I recommend if you're going to use terminal mode is doozy. So you get your USB, micro USB, plug it into your laptop or PC and I'll show you the program. So I highly recommend this by David. Thank you, David. PA7 LIM. You, you just literally put in your cable into your laptop run this program I'll, there's i've got a separate video on how to do it and you can use all the reflectors without any hotspot and to come out of terminal mode just go menu and then just select normal mode the gps automatically is on by default and when it's locked it will it will stay on if you look up there it will stay on now if you want to set the time just go menu Set and go scroll down to time set, and look, you can, you've got all the different settings there to set the time. Now you've got the ability here to have a normal broadcast radio. Just go menu, go up to FM radio, and then look, you can turn it on, and you'll hear that. Works really well, and then it goes quiet when you have ham operation. Quite, quite, quite impressive, quite impressive. You can turn it off, you go quick menu here, look, you can just go off, and there's some other settings you can add as well. Go back into menu. Let's look at record, I haven't really done this. QSO recorder, not something I have, I have ever done. Record set, player set. Voice recorder. Record and play and DV auto reply and you can record and play
Got one here called Voice, Record, and TX. Single TX, Repeat TX. That's like an auto voice transmit. The CD section is more of the history of your previous digital voice contacts. So I, I would say that's more to, D, to, to do with DV mode. We'll look at that in a second. Let's go to the main menu. And let's we'll keep it in sing, single receive, but you can do it on dual receive. And we'll go into DR mode. Now the u, unique thing about this radio is that it will receive digital uh, voice or D star on the A and the B band simultaneously. So let's just hold it down. We're back in dual mode at the moment. So we go A and B. We'll hold down, let's, well, it's already in it, let's come out. So to go into DR mode, you hold down DR. And if we go to the B band, we can hold it down again. And so we've got DR on A and B band. But we'll just do it one at a time. So we'll hold this down. We're in DR mode. DR mode um, is, uh, is, is, is a very good system, but it does take a while to get your head around it. So I'll just sort of do the basics. The top section is um, the setting that you use to activate or talk to or your jumbo hotspot or your repeater. It doesn't have to be just digital, it can be FM analog as well. So we'll just look at the top section. So to, you can highlight it by going up and down like that. So if we highlight the top section, mine says use reflector. That setting is needed when I'm using my Jumbo Hotspot, otherwise people won't hear me. But it, we can also change that to link to a reflector. So if we select it, and then select Reflector for now, we're on Use Reflector. But if we go to Link Reflector, we can look at our history, but we can also directly input a reflector number. So if we push the middle button here, and go, we, we don't have to use reflectors. We've got XRF, DCS, XLX, but the most common is reflector. And then we can select the number of the reflector here and, the mo and then we can go over. And the most common one is CL. So for example, reflector 001 Charlie and L is for link. And that will put that here. When we key the, the PTT, if we're on our jumbo hotspot on the same frequency, it will connect it. Now the thing is we have to select which jumbo hotspot repeater or link we're gonna use. So let's just change the top back to reflector and use reflector. Then we're going to push this DR button just briefly downwards and we're in the bottom section. And now we can select the hotspot that we have entered into this radio or repeater. So if we select it, uh, let's go to repeater list. And in the group I'm using, I've got all my hotspots, but you could select a group um, like for example this one's UK D star we select it and look at all these different uh, repeaters that we connect to and if we're in range of those repeaters it would automatically put the settings in but because we're using my hotspot at home we select it um, we can go to TX history to find it for example my Pi star so it is a bit complicated but it's one of those ones where as you use it you learn it so now at the moment, we're using my hotspot on the from section. And then if, if my hotspot is turned on and we and we talk now, we'll be here on, on reflector one Charlie, if that's what we've connected to. So we'll go reflector here. Uh, we'll go, we'll go repeater information. I don't know if my hotspot is even turned on. And if we key, it should tell us what we're linked to. Link to R-E-F-0-0-1-Charlie. So we are linked to one Charlie. So the other thing we can do is we can do an echo test. So reflector, echo test, let's try it. M0-FXB test. M0-FXB test. So we get an idea of uh, what we sound like. Let's just select your call sign. You can select different call signs because this is the section that's also used for XLX and XRF and DCS reflectors. 
so you can add add them in. So that's a, another learning curve. Gateway CQ, I haven't really used that. Local CQ. So I tend, I'm pretty sure you put that in when you're using a normal repeater in DR mode. So this, hopefully your British version of, the, of this radio will come with a CSV file with all your DR memories in. So let's show you what that will achieve. So if we go back to the bottom section, select it here, click near repeaters. Now we'll, we'll just select DV for now, but you can, if you can select all, it will do FM and DV. Select that and it will search and it will find the nearest repeater to you. And then say you select it, it's, that means it's now going to use that repeater that's near you. Now you could be anywhere in the, in the world doing this because it will use your GPS coordinates. And then you can keep it on the CQ section and, and see if you can talk to someone using that uh, repeater. Or you could bring your hotspot with you, I suppose. Now you can export, import and export the repeater lists using the SD card. You go menu, go set SD card, and then go to the import, export, and looks. Go to import. And if you've got the file which you put on your SD card, look, repeater lists. And that's the one I've imported before, but you can import and export. So uh, really, uh, there's a whole separate video on this section. Op uh, you notice that when my radio boots up, I've added an opening picture. So look, you just go to opening picture here on the SD card, uh, and then you, you, you load one in, basically. Uh, again, a separate video on that all together. <clears throat> Whilst we're here, we'll, we'll look at QSO log. Oh, yeah, so basically you turn it on and off. CSV format there. Okay. Right, we'll come out of DR mode. And we'll just show you DTMF. So you can key the mic to transmit DTMF by, by selecting quick. Then go DTMF TX. And then look, you've, I've got these memories here. As you can see, now how do we get them in the memories? Select menu, set, then go down to DTMF, at DTMF memory, and look, you could add them here. So if we select this one here, push the low button, now select the line you want, then push the quick button. Click edit, and now you can put in your star, and your numbers, whatever you need, enter, and then you've added it. So it's DT number two we've added there. So we come out of that, go quick, DTMF TX, look, DT2, select it, and that's your DTMF. If we go back into DR mode, hold this down the DR, then hold the RXCS upwards, then we'll get the history, RX of contacts on digital voice. Also, if we hold the CD button to the left, we have our history, RX history here as well. We can scroll through that, which is quite good information. Sometimes I watch this live when I'm having a chat with someone, so I've got lots of information because you do get pop-up screens when you're listening to D-Star on your Jumbo hotspot and you can look at your Pi-Star dashboard, but they're not with the pop-up screens, they vanish. This is on all the time and back out by just pushing CD. Now ICOM radios have DPRS instead of APRS. So they'll transmit your position um, using their sort of software technology onto the APRS FI system. So how do you turn that on? So go to menu, Go to GPS, then go to, let's have a look at the top here, GPS, manual operation, let's have a quick look, GPS TX mode, select that and look, you've got NMEA or DPRS and off. So let's just click right on that, TX format. So I, I would just select DPRS if I wanted to use that or I would turn it off. So to turn off the GPS completely, go to GPS set, 
GPS select and then look you can turn it off when you back out that the GPS is gone you want and all the information is gone you want it back on just go menu GPS GPS set GPS select and turn it back on there you go satellite information look GPS only let's go back menu that should it's flashing now and after a few minutes it should get a lot i found that it's been quite good the gps on this right we'll just have one last look at the menu i mean i'm still new to this radio but at the top you've got duplex tone next down is scan options scope settings and options here call sign as you know it's very important to get your call sign in but this is probably the last used call sign. Um, I think this is a bit more in depth for now when you're setting up um, your D, D star settings. My station call sign, DV set, big menu on DV set, DTMF, QSO. Functions, power save, monitor, dial speed, mic gain, active band. I mean, there's so much in this radio. CIV, USB, display settings. A lot of these you're going to learn as you go along. Sounds, if you want, you know, you can control all the different sounds that you're hearing, like the beeps and things. Sub band, mute. Uh, definitely this radio has it's been, it's very, uh, has been... It talks to you basically and tells you what frequency you're on and things like that. STL. So I think that's enough for now for you to just to get the basics of this radio. And, uh, you know, you first turn it on and, and it will help you uh, know some of the functions. So thanks for watching 7.3 and catch you on air. Just a quick add on about your DR, adding your, D, your hotspot in DR mode. So first thing is... Come out of DR mode, go into menu, and then it, see set here, but just go across one, you want to hit memory. Then go to um, repeater list. Select the one where you, I mean, you could add, add a, a whole group and call it like my hotspots. I've, I've added one, and well, I actually edited one and call, that was called naught one local and added my hotspots. If you select that, there's my hotspots. Now, if you want to add one, click quick menu and click add. And then so this will be your jumbo hotspot at home. So it's a DV repeater name. Let's just so for time. We just call it J. Enter. And you can put the sub name as well if you want home hotspot. Uh, call sign. So you need to get your call sign in there. So I'll just put anything for now. So call sign A, B, C, B, A. Then you go all the way up, push your little right thing all the way along and then click enter. And it automatically puts a G in there. If you've got uh, more than one hotspot, you might have to change the G, but that's more advanced. Okay, then you can select which group you want to put it in, but it's already in group one. And then use from, I always change that to, to yes. Then the frequency. So the frequency of your hotspot, like so. Enter. Duplex plus or minus, always do this. Plus or minus, doesn't matter. Always, always do it. Then go down. And then your offset, well, set it to naught for a hotspot. Obviously, if you've got a repeater, then you'll set it to the shift of the repeater. Position is up to you. Approximate latitude, again, it's up to you what to put. Look it up on Google if you're not sure. Enter UTC offset. We'll just put one hour for UK for now. And then add right. Click yes. So you've just created your hotspot frequency. So back out of that. Back out of that. 
when you go back into DR mode, push DR here. Then select it to the bottom half by pushing DR again. And select where it says Western Supermare. And then you want to go to repeat a list and look, go back to local and then look, we called it J and select J. That's how you select your hotspot. Then go up to CQ and select reflector, then use reflector. And you will now be using your jumbo hotspot at home or it could be a repeater if that's the frequencies you put in. 7.3, all the best.